last week or after our show last week, there was kind of a lot of stuff that happened. Um, specifically, we'll start with the Eric B. Enemy article that hit the airwaves last week. Um, now, this article has been since taken down, um, yes. but at the time, some were calling it a kind of a hit piece on Eric B. Enemy. Others are saying it makes sense of whether how up and down our offense was last year. Um, essentially, the article talks about a lot of things. It's a very long article, um, and it's backed by a lot of sources and anonymous, unnamed sources. But essentially, it alleges that Mahomes and Eric Bieniemy did not get along, and Bieniemy's ego kind of often gets away, uh, gets in the way of finally getting him a head coaching job. Kind of a big ego is what the article says. But since the article was published, it's been taken down. Tyreek Hill and Darius uh, Darius Fountain. Uh, came out making fun of the article, essentially saying EB's a great coach. Um, don't believe what you hear, kind of denying the contents of the article. But since uh, B- Benjamin Albright of the KOA Colorado Radio in Denver, um, who's gone back with EB as far as he was uh, covering the Colorado Buffaloes when EB was there as an OC and a running backs coach, he said all but 5% of the article is stuff that he's heard before. So he's not denying that the he said the article it wasn't news to him. He's heard a lot of the stuff about Eric Bieniemy. He wasn't surprised about. Um, there's an article alleged that during the season this year, and a veteran offensive lineman stood up and kind of talked uh, talked back to Bieniemy um, during the season. He uh, verified that story in the article. But hearing this whole thing kind of go down, what were your thoughts when you guys heard it, JD? I know you're friends uh, with Coach Bieniemy. You know him personally. Um, what were your thoughts when you uh, heard this uh, article or read this article? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take it slow. Um, now, I mean, I really, I, after looking at the article, reading it, um, you know, I, I just kind of, kind of shaking my head at how those all was put together. And really, to me, it seemed like a hit piece. I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, it's what it really seemed like. Uh, and, and the reason why, um, because like kind of later when, when people like credible journalists would talk about, they would say, look, I would never ever publish this at all just because you don't have any names behind it to, to really uh, corroborate the story. And so sometimes verification with your sources is very, is vital, especially to something, you know, to make it believable, you know, or have credibility. Uh, and so the things I was reading, look, and, and, and here's the thing, is some of it true? I'm sure it is. I'm sure that like the issues of might be, you know, kind of blowing up on Patrick and having, you know, uh, uh, you know, arguments with them and made offense. Absolutely. I, I, I do believe that. But I also believe that, you know, those times mm-hmm. what ends up happening, those guys, they, they, they repair those relationships. They put them back together. And to, for anybody who believes that Andy Reid, uh, that's been a coach this long, wouldn't be able to control his coaches and, and the players, it's just you're fooling yourself. And so w- when I'm thinking about this and, and, and some of the other things, I'm just kind of referencing the article, they was talking about, well, it was in the enemy's contract, you know, certain plays that he called, he could call the plays. Listen, let's be honest. The only reason that you write certain things in contracts is just to detail what your job and responsibilities are, right? That's what it is. But make no uh, bones about this. Do not think for a second that Andy has the last say in, in, in every call. I don't care who it is. I don't care if he has, you know, as far as like, he's, he's yeah, he's calling the plays, but Andy, he's, he makes the last call on everything. See, the thing is, during the offseason, you got to realize that, you know, in, in the professional ranks, they go through every scenario, every situation. And I'm telling this it's to the T. When I'm talking about very detailed, I'm talking about it's, it's every, you know, if, it's, if you're down, you know, certain amount of points with this much time to go on the game, they've gone through every scenario. And this, this is something they do every single day. And so it's like guys are just not sitting around. They're going through different things on the, that will happen uh, during the course of a game. And so what they do, they collaborate offensively. So the enemy, of course, is collaborating, you know, with Andy and all of his staff on there, the wide receiver coach, the line, all of them. They all get into offense meeting. They talk about these things. And so what Andy does is he's making sure because he's, you know, the leader of the group, he's the head coach, he is making sure and he's sounding off and he's checking off on all the things that's being called and what's being ran. It's the same thing they keep talking about, like the first 15, the first 25 plays. Well, that's Andy making those calls and then Benami takes over. No, it's a, a collaborative effort. Believe that. So every play that's being ran, it's not Andy making that call. It's Andy and, and, and the enemy talking about these things. So what will be the first 15? And the first 15 is just, it's like a template to get 
like the play calling, the, the formations. You want to get the temp, you know, the tempo of the game. That's what you're trying to assert. You're trying to see what the defense is giving you. And so it, it's based off what you see. And so it ain't like you just run through the first 15, but these things are collaborative efforts. So it's not like Andy's just giving a list over to the enemy, like call these first 15, and then you take over. That To me, if, if anybody believes that, they just don't understand how, you know, offenses just ran the NFL. It's, it's not like that in any way. And so um, I just, to me, what I've seen over the time, and I know everybody talks about, oh, this source, this said, said that. Look, if your brother's cousin or somebody was talking and that might be your source, Look, man, get away from that noise. Absolutely get away from the noise. I would have rather guys say, look, I don't want to be anybody here to be the uh, offense coordinator. Move on to somebody else. I'd rather that article just sit there and say that as opposed to being slanted against the enemy in a particular way. Now, when, uh, uh, of course, Tyreek comes out and all those other guys say, look, man, the enemy comes in, man, he's a great coach. What are you talking about? Right? And then Pat is like, man, y'all y'all are wilding out here. I think all of this is just salacious news. You're right. It's just something just to talk about. They want to blame somebody. And if it's somebody that's in the organization, part of it is maybe they wanted to take the blame off themselves. Right. They didn't want part of that or that or that, uh, that the volatile talk going to them like, well, don't blame me. This is what I'm telling you. This is what I heard. So I don't really put a lot of stake in it, credibility into it. As soon as I read it, I'm like, man, this is just this is just trash. Trash, right? The trash written, you know, articles and journalism. Right. It might be some things it's like this. You weave a little bit of truth in with a little bit of like salacious you know, grabbing out here to see what what else I can grab, you know, feel with it. That's how I felt about like how the article uh, presented itself. And so, yeah, these things would and I'm going to go back to what you said before. I know I'm, I'm doing a lot, but when they were talking about the enemy. Yeah, I've heard these things before about the enemy. Well, we talking this is this is years ago what the enemy said and how he is right now. So does that take away from, you know, other things that may be happening, other factors? No, it doesn't. And so when somebody was there at, at a certain point to where they are now could be totally different. It's the same thing that Tony Dungy said for a long time. They said he didn't interview well. He didn't interview well. And so finally, when he got a head coaching job, somebody gave him a chance. He wins the Super Bowl. He takes him, you know, to the, the, uh, to the championship games. That guy said, you know what? I was wrong about you. Just because I didn't like, you know, your style and I was looking for a raw, raw guy, somebody to cuss guys out, I didn't think he was it. You didn't really fit what I wanted. And I apologize for that. And Tony said, man, for a long time, that followed him saying he didn't interview well. So that's where I look at it, man. It's just kind of a hit piece, man. It is a lot there, uh, but I really didn't put a lot of stake in it. Yeah, you could sprinkle a little, little bit of truth here, and I'll, yeah, I get that. But, uh, you know, further than that, man, make no, they make no mistakes about it. Nothing goes through that locker room or to any player or anybody else without Andy knowing. And Andy's going to make sure he puts everybody in place. I, I could guarantee that. I don't care who it is. So if any EB steps out of line, Andy's going to say something to him. EB ain't going to come to him. Well, I got this in my contract. Andy, you'll probably rip that contract up. Look, I'm the guy. It ain't you. My job's on the line. I'm the one that hired you. You here for me. Okay? We are all a family, all a team. And just like any family, you're going to fight. It's going to be arguments. It's going to happen. So... I'll leave it there. Go ahead, E. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I, you know, I was heated. I, I, you know, I was heated when the article first came out. I'm just like, man, this is crazy. It is. You know, I talked to some other guys about this, man, and we just, you know, it, it, we had a lot. Right, of so, so, so the way I saw that article is, is to how you is to how you want to take it, man, but. I didn't put too, I didn't invest too much into it because we've seen the same thing happen. Like coaches want to get the best of us. They they get the best out of us. So they're going to give us a, a, a playbook and hopefully, you know, by the time it's game time, we can go out and perfect that, that, uh, that, that game book or the plays that have been called in the field. No, but the thing is, is we're not perfect. I don't think one player is going to go out there and have a perfect game. So you're going to have some, some arguments amongst players and coaches. They had it on, on national TV with Josh McDaniel and, and uh, Tom Brady yeah. more than once. Mm -hmm. Does that mean he's a bad coach? No. Uh, and, and the thing with EB, I just hope the way this whole thing is playing out is that at some point, you know, it's, it's, uh, he's already talked to Andy Reid about uh, Andy 
retiring pretty soon and handing them the keys. If that's not the case, you know, then we can come back and have these discussions about um, what the, the issue really is. Because if you're able to, you know, um, basically go out and coach this kid uh, into becoming, being considered one of the tops that we've ever seen, you know, to put up the stats that he's seen to come out and win the Super Bowl within a, a few amount of years uh, and have some phenomenal plays that, that come out of this, this, this scheme that you put together with him. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of things that, that make it all work. And EB is not the main uh, uh, piece to it. You know, he's a part of it. Andy's a part of it. Uh, Patrick's a part of it. There's quality control guys that write up the plays and do the film work that's a part of it. Um, but yeah, during game time, things aren't going to be perfect. Pat's not going to make the right read. Um, he's not going to make the right throw. You know, Kelsey's not going to make the right cut. He's not going to make every catch. It happens. You're going to have arguments. You know, people, you know, these are prideful men. I mean, some are young, but, you know, they're still men. And everybody has pride. Nobody wants to be shown up on national TV. Nobody wants to be shown up at practice. So you're going to have these, 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 these arguments. These, you know, you're going to butt heads. Um, but at the end of the day, you respect one another. And if you don't respect one another, then that's where it comes to uh, you need to talk to the coach and the GM about where we stand and if we can continue doing this. And if these two guys think that, you know, this is just an everyday, every week occurrence, then the write-up basically means nothing because we've seen this over the years between coaches and players. It happens every year. Yeah. All the time. All the time. And, and look at it in, the, in the notion, too, that is EB going to be confident? Is going to be really arrogant and cocky? Absolutely. I, I don't know any coach uh, that's an OC or a head coach that doesn't have it about him, right? I think part of the part of the reason you, you hire a guy like that is because they get, he's got a little bit of that you know, in him. So, man, look, like he said, you know, EB can't catch all the balls. He can't run every route. You know, he can't he can't throw the guy that was open. Um, and if it was just talking about just that 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 play before the half, and EB getting on on Patrick about that, he's getting on it because he's just like, look, you, you had a job to do. You didn't get the job done. We told you if you don't have something, throw it out of bounds. And I could I could easily see something like that happen. I would have been livid too. I'd have been I'd have been in this tale as well. And so that's why Pat was like, look, it was on me. And he was like, hey, I probably should have made a different call whatever and hey that's how these things go man you said everything's not going to be perfect but shoot yeah i think the one thing that some fans are saying that there might be some validity to the article is the fact that why hasn't eric Bieniemy resigned yet i mean what, what, what's taking so long i mean is there something more behind the scenes that we don't know about like the, this article would indicate is that he hasn't signed because you i mean as we've talked about in the show you would think there's no head coaching job available. You would think you'd want to come on to resign with the, with the Chiefs, the best offense in the league again. I mean, what, I mean what's going on behind the scenes is that he would not Man, we can only speculate off of what we go, for what people put on social media, for what we read in the news or, or at Sports Center. Yep. You know, none of us know what's going on behind those doors. Um, you know, do we like what we have in Kansas City? I, I sure do. Uh, would I like to keep it that way? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'd love to see more success come from it than what we've been, than what we've had. But hell, I like what we have. Um, so I don't want to cause turmoil between uh, the guys on my team to where things are falling apart. Um, so, you know, that's what social media is for, is to give everybody an opinion, uh, is to give, you know, good and bad reads to, 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 to stir, stir the pot. You know, usually the pot gets stirred more when you got negative stuff involved. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's all we, what we have right now. So, and, and whatever, you know, Veach, Andy, um, Patrick and, and, and EB are doing, I'm happy with it. You know, as long as we have those, those guys uh, wearing a Chiefs shirt, you know, I, I'm still one of the happiest person on earth. 